Hello everyone, my name is Peron, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be bringing you another case uh, from my Polish Unsolved series that I've been running here on this channel for a few episodes now. Uh, today's case is of Mateusz Kawecki. It's a fairly new case, it's also mysterious and tragic because um, his body does get found in the end if I'm going to spoil it for you now and I'll be talking about what happened to him before, during and after his disappearance and also I'll be bringing you the theories at the end and if you guys like this kind of true crime content it would be awesome if you could uh, leave a subscription um, and if you want to check out more videos from my true crime playlist it should be just here somewhere here and yeah without further ado let's get into it so the date is 28th of March 2018 the 30 year old Mateusz Kawecki lives in Hanover which is a city in Germany he moved there because he was looking for a job uh, and also his father lives there uh, originally he is from Hutkuf, a pretty small village in Poland he worked as a construction worker for around five years in Hanover at the time of his disappearance and like I said he was living with his father Mateusz also has a sister and a mother and they are really close and spend a lot of time together and this kind of will come into play later on in the in the story Mateusz also has a fiance in Poland um, not in the same town as um, his parents house um, she lives more uh, closer to the German border uh, and they have a baby on the way literally in a few days um, his fiance is due to deliver the new baby so on the 28th of march Mateusz comes back from uh, his work and he calls his sister saying that he's um, gonna leave today to go to see his fiance he's planning to leave around um, midnight so he can make it to poland in the morning to see his fiance so now Mateusz is really excited about this new baby he's about to become a a, a new father basically he's telling everyone in his family how excited he is how how much he can't wait to see his fiance and his baby um and he's generally just a ha happy guy um and just generally really excited to his, see his baby now mateus doesn't drive to his family's house he goes straight to lipia gura which is uh, his fiance's uh, where his fiance's flat is uh, it wouldn't make sense for him to travel all the way across Poland and then go back up um, so yeah he drives straight to his fiance's house it's closer to Hanover and it should have taken him about seven to eight hours um, that's without any stops uh, that's just a straight uh, route and now Mateusz and his fiance had this long distance relationship for a while now and obviously it's been working out for them and they have a new baby on the way uh, Mateusz called everyone telling them that he'll be in Poland in the morning so it's all set um, the family is waiting for Mateusz to arrive um, and get notified when he comes to his fiance and obviously they're all waiting for the news about the new baby at 11 30 p.m Mateusz leaves uh, his house in Hanover and he picks the route through Szczecin which um, which is the route he usually takes and uh, like I said before it sh should take around seven and a half hours to get to his fiance's place however at 10 a.m um, Mateusz's father calls him to see if he arrived yet because if he left at around 11:30 uh, p.m. he should have been he should have been at his fiance's place around seven or eight, um, judging by the how how long his route usually takes. Um, so his father calls him, asks him if he's at his fiance's place, um, and Mateusz t tells him that uh, no, he's in Szczecin, which is around two hours away from his fiance's place. Um, and the dad gets a little bit worried and Mateusz calms him down by saying that there was traffic on the road and there also were uh, two truck crashes now the dad when he was questioned about this call um, after Mateusz's disappearance he, he said he didn't notice anything wrong or he didn't notice Mateusz being nervous or acting in a suspicious way so Mateusz had around a four hour setback where he was supposed to be at the fiance's place but he was not, not there yet and at 10.22 Mateusz texts his fiance saying that he'll arrive at, their, at her flat 
uh, in two hours. So now it's 5 p.m. and Mateusz still has not arrived. Everyone's getting a bit worried. No one really heard anything from him. They don't know what, uh, where he is, what, what he's doing. So at 5 p.m. the fiance calls the sister of uh, Mateusz, which the sister lives also in Hanover with the with the father and him. She kind of just calms him down and confirms, kind of like, let's not be worried. Let's let's. Um, he probably got stuck in traffic, or maybe his battery died and he, he can't call you. Um, and she's just basically trying to keep her calm. Obviously, she's um, she's uh, close to giving a baby, so she doesn't want to stress her out. And she just says, let's wait till 10 p.m. and, and see what happens. But um, let's be honest here, um, he was already delayed by two hours in the beginning and now he's been missing for another five hours. That's around seven hours where he's just gone basically off track. No one really heard from him. No one knew where he was. Um, and it, it's kind of, I would say suspicious, I guess. But it's just interesting where he was in those hours. So now it's 10 p.m. Um, and the fiance calls again. And now everyone's is pretty stressed out. They don't know where he is. Um, he's been gone for 12 hours and it's a pretty significant amount of time for someone to be lost. Um, I, get, I guess if his car broke down or something, he, he would have found a charger to kind of charge his phone. but. But yeah, there was no sign of him. So the family decided to go to the police and report it to the police as a missing person. Um, however, the police kind of disregarded it. Um, they said, oh, it's only been 12 hours. Maybe he's, he's taken a nap somewhere. Like um, the journey was too long and he's just taken a nap somewhere or like, you know, his phone died or, or he just get delayed somewhere. So yeah, the family gets sent sent back home um, they're really stressed out they don't really know what's going on so they decide to go to sleep um, and now it's the 30th of March which is the next morning and Mateusz is still missing he's still gone so the mother goes to the police and reports a missing person's uh, file report because nothing has changed overnight also the sister reports him missing in Hanover um, however the police in Germany says they can't really intervene as it's a, a Polish Polish police case basically and uh, legally they have to wait four weeks before they can start doing something about it. So the police, uh, the Polish police is kind of um, kind of searching for him but not really doing anything. The German police can't do anything and uh, the four weeks pass um, so the sister goes again to uh, to the Hanover police and reports it again um, and she is surprised that the police kind of didn't do anything they didn't do any flyers um, obviously it was kind of disregarded as they couldn't do anything in those four weeks but um, there was no like not even like a little report uh, wrote out that he's missing and she was really angry that seeing that they didn't even do anything and the policewoman that she was talking to said that she is quite surprised that nothing was done about this case and that's basically where the help from the German police ends they just um, didn't really do anything to be fair uh, which is crazy because imagine someone from your family kind of goes missing and the police just like eh, we can't we can't do really anything uh, it's horrible it's really horrible. So the German police doesn't help. The Polish police is doing something, but they're not really doing anything. It's been four weeks, they haven't done anything. So the family asks Polish police to use the GPS on the phone because the phone is still on. When when they ring, um, the signal comes through, you know, they can hear that the, the phone is on. They don't get like cut off or anything. Um, so they know the phone is still working after four weeks, which is crazy. Um, and they ask if the police can uh, use the GPS to locate the phone. Um, and the police is like, yeah, we can try. But uh, unfortunately, the SIM card that was in Mateusz's phone is a German SIM card, which uh, I, I'm guessing by law they can't access because it's in a different country. It's a different, different country's SIM, so they can't access the GPS. So now the sister in Hanover goes to the police, explains the whole situation again, 
and asks if they can um, access the GPS. And the German police says that, that they can't access the GPS of the phone because he went missing on the Polish territory, which is not in Germany, so they can't access it because he went missing in Poland, and then the Polish police can't access it because it's a German SIM. So it's just creating this circle of no one really wants to do anything about it, and the Polish police is like, no, we can't do it, you have to go to the German police, and then the German police is like, no, you have to go to the Polish police, and the, the family is, is just basically helpless, and they don't really know what to do. However, the police uh, can access the calls and the messages that were sent, just not the GPS, which is interesting. Um, and there was a little short call uh, sent to Mateusz's uncle, but the call was so short that it didn't register on the uncle's end. Um, it must have been like a split second where, where he maybe opened it and closed it or someone else did it. Uh, but basically, the call didn't register on the uncle's end so that he, he didn't even know that he was trying to call him. So it seems as though the phone isn't gonna lead the family anywhere with any clues. So the family decides that they will look at the CCTV cameras um, like at the border. The border usually has some kind of monitoring. So they thought maybe they will have some kind of footage of his car. So they go to this uh, organization that's responsible for holding the CCTV cameras and they found, find some footage of him, but they don't really specify it to the family, which is um, weird. And I don't know why they wouldn't do that, but they don't actually have the footage of him at, at the border. It's just, the footage is just missing. They just said they don't have it, which is another pretty interesting and weird thing. Because if they had footage of him before, why, why wouldn't they have footage of him um, at the border or in Poland or you know anywhere else but yeah so it was kind of no one knew if he was actually in Poland or he was still in Germany again the the clues were all ending with a dead end basically so now Mateusz's disappearance um, in Poland gets kind of raised to a level two um, disappearance I guess uh, it's, it basically means that that the police sends a message to all Polish like units saying that uh, this person went missing and they, you know, pull up flyers and, and stuff like that. But it's classified as non-life-threatening, -life so basically it's not an urgent thing. So they're really just taking it really slow. So Mateusz was driving a dark blue BMW with a German registration, which you can see probably here on the picture, uh, which the family tried to go around gas station and ask if anyone saw him. And at one of the gas stations, a guy says he recognizes him but he can't specify him if he saw him at the gas station or somewhere else where he said that he for sure knows him which is an odd thing to say um they didn't say where the gas station was but it's it's an odd thing to say it's like yeah i know that guy but i don't know where from um it's kind of just giving dead clues i would say and kind of just misleading the family so another few days go by the police is not doing anything um the family is just really don't, don't they don't know what to do anymore the police is not helping so they go to polish tv specifically ones that deal with like um, missing reports people and they do like a true crime kind of uh, documentary and the tv actually takes it and they do a story on him uh, i believe on the 14th of april they released a little interview with the family and then after the interview there's been some other programs that also took it and kind of broadcasted it at some point the family gets access to mateusz's Facebook account and they go through the messages maybe seeing that uh, he can they can find something but they notice uh, a lot of messages from the police and and the messages are just saying something like Mr. Mateusz please come back uh, the family is worried everyone's waiting for you something like something that you would write to someone who's missing or like suicidal I guess and the family just gets really upset about this because is that the most that the police can do is just send him messages on Facebook. I know it's still doing something, uh, like trying to contact him, but to me that's pretty useless. Like, if that that's the most the police can do, you know, you, you can do that yourself. They could have done that themselves. And they didn't need police to do that. Um, 
yeah, I'm just surprised at the state of the police, to be honest. So now you kind of get the story of the events that have happened. And I would say this is kind of where the story gets even more interesting. So a few months passed, uh, Mateusz is still missing. The summer is slowly ending and it's now September. And Mateusz's mom is in the garden doing some chores. And one of the neighbor walks over and asks her if they were able to locate that dead animal near the barn, as it's been smelling of a decaying body for a few days and they thought maybe it was a cat or something and they just wanted to ask if they found that uh, that cat or something. And the mom says she looked for it, but she couldn't find the dead uh, animal, so she just left it. And then the neighbor asks her if she's checked the barn properly and does she want some help? Maybe they can both find it. So she says yes, and they go, they both go all over to the barn. And the neighbor checks the floor, there's nothing there. And then there's a little attic part, um, usually where you would store hay over the winter and, and summer. So he goes up the ladder and he notices like a black cotton cover, um, maybe like a blanket or something. And he asks uh, the mom if she knows what this is and, and what should he do with it. Uh, the mom says she doesn't know what, what that is. So basically the neighbor just lifts up the cover and notices there's a uh, dead human body just laying there and it gets confirmed that it's the body of Mateusz that was found so the police comes over secure the body um, kind of check the the barn for any clues they can find and the barn is pretty drastic looking and on the top a uh, wooden support that's going through through the length of the barn there is a um, there's two loops uh, of rope, kind of look like the ones you would uh, make to hang yourself, basically. So it looks as basically Mateusz hanged himself in his uh, family's barn. Um, however, the body is laying on the floor with his head decapitated and put between his uh, legs. And his skull is also missing his teeth, uh, which would kind of suggest that he was basically brutally beaten um, because there was basically no other way for him to lose his teeth like that. If he somehow fell from hanging himself and then kind of hit the floor, it still wouldn't knock out his teeth, um, especially that it's only been like a meter of height um, and there was also straw on the barn floor. So it was basically impossible and Mateusz's sister went to a dentist to ask if that was possible and he just confirmed that that's, that would be impossible. The teeth are just way too strong to get um, taken out like that from a fall. And the more gross thing is his teeth were kind of stuck to his, um, to his clothes with uh, like a mixture of his blood and his saliva. Basically, if he was beaten and Maybe he laid on his teeth um, and he bled out. Then, then the blood would harden and basically it stuck the teeth to his clothes, which is pretty drastic. Um, that's probably not a thing that they find often. So yeah, this is pretty horrible, the way they find him. Um, basically decapitated and missing his teeth. The teeth are stuck to his um, clothes. And how could he possibly be in his family's barn, which is another seven or eight hour drive from his fiance's um, all the way across to his family's house. How could he, you know, be there? Why, why, why is he in the barn of his family? And how has no one uh, noticed him for such a long time? Uh, I don't know, but uh, let's continue the story. Uh, now the police takes the body of Mateusz and they also take a few things that were found, which uh, which was a bag, wallet, um, and also his phone that he had in his, in his pocket. However, they don't find the keys to the car, um, the car's uh, registration slip, or and of course the car itself. When the police gives the items to the family to kind of look to kind of look through, um, the family finds a plastic bottle. Um, filled with a little bit of water on the bottom and also uh, cigarette uh, ends you know when you smoke cigarettes and you have the ends and you throw them away um, they were basically in the bottle uh, which could be used for DNA testing if they took it in they could maybe find 
um, who who was with him at the time. And they also find orange juice, uh, which is which was weird for Mateusz to have orange juice because the family knows that he never drank orange juice. And that, that was a bit weird for him to do, which the family noticed. And then when the police was uh, about to leave with all the items that they found and the body of Mateusz, the family asks if they searched through the whole place. Prop um, maybe maybe there's some things that they haven't seen. And the police responds, yeah, they, they did their best job, but it's a hay barn and they would actually have to go through all the hay and that would take them two weeks. Um... <laughs> And the family at this point is just basically fuming. They're so angry. You're the police? <laughs> you're supposed to do it. Um, you're, you're kind of supposed to do the job and actually go through all that hay to kind of find the things. And the police just says, yeah, they don't have time for it. If the family wants to do it themselves, they can. And the family, like I said, they're just really angry at the police about how basically incompetent they are. So at this point, the police is basically saying that Mateusz just committed suicide and and that was the reasoning for his death, basically. Uh, so on the same day, the family was like, you know what, we're just gonna go through the barn and just see if, if they missed anything, if they can find something. And they immediately spot there was a shoe just out in the open, the police didn't take it or they didn't notice it but it wasn't really that hard to to see it um which again shows how bad the police did their job and they find Mateusz's shoe and in that in that shoe there was a sock and in that sock there was a uh, part of his foot and now imagine that they found that foot when the police basically left and the police was doing the autopsy on his body the police didn't notice there was a foot missing I don't know how they did that. I don't know if they were just like, ah, you know what, it's, just, it's a missing foot, whatever. I don't know how you can do an autopsy without a missing foot and just not notice it. The autopsy comes back and the autopsy doesn't state that he was missing a foot, which was interesting, but it stated that he was missing um, his fingers and his palms, basically. So I don't know what happened to him, but it was clearly uh, horrible. You know, he was decapitated, missing a foot, missing uh, fingers and hands, basically. And yeah, the, the rest of his body parts were, were not found. So they don't know where where his fingers and hands are. So then again, uh, how does his body end up in the barn? Uh, how does no one notice it for so many months? Uh, why do they only notice it uh, when they start to smell, you know, the body when the barn um, is used by multiple neighbors. Uh, anyone can go in there, just store their items. The family was there a lot of times in the summer, um, as again, they store their items there, uh, their tools for the farm. And uh, the most important thing is that the barn doors are usually wide open and you can see from the first floor to the attic. Um, there's probably gonna be some videos playing in the background and yeah, no one, no one seemed to notice him. Um, and I think that has something to do with the family um, making really big uh, noise about this story and it's going into media um, and the media really promotes it. Um, so there was, it was known that there was gonna be a search for Mateusz around the Lipia Gura area and, and Szczecin. There was supposed to be an organized search uh, from May to October for him. So kind of anyone knew that the family is not going to be in the house and they're going to be gone from the house because they're going to be uh, at that search for Mateusz. And the family leaves in May and they come back in June to their house in Hutkov. And from June to kind of September, they're, they're smelling that kind of um, decaying body smell, uh, rotting basically. and. You can see that clearly someone could have known that the family is going to be out of out of the village and maybe they, you know, dropped the body over there because I don't know in how they could have possibly missed his body otherwise. And one of the things I can't, I literally cannot get my head around is how the police treated the items that were found at the body, basically. Uh, they didn't 
they didn't secure the items properly uh, they didn't mark the items they didn't take any dna tests um, and just after two days the police returned to the family with a few plastic bags literally bin plastic bags and they ju just dropped off the the items of Mateusz to them like it was not secure it was not even looked through um, and they just give it to them like eh, here you go you, you can have the these items back like how much of negligence has been in this case already from the German police not helping out, um, Polish police not doing anything really, to them just now dropping it off. You know the autopsy they didn't do it properly, and this just this the whole case is a big. Um, it's just a big mess of police not doing their job properly. And yeah, this was the story. I hope you guys kind of got your own theories as we are going to move on to the theory segment of this uh, video. And the first theory is just that Mateusz um, basically just committed suicide. And this is the theory that the police goes with. Um, they're saying that Mateusz basically couldn't handle life. Maybe he was too stressed out and he just took his own life in that barn uh, really for me this theory makes no sense uh, he was about to become a father he had a happy life um, just doesn't make sense why he would do it the second theory this is a joint theory it is speculated that Mateusz could have been um, involved in some bad business with some people in germany or, or poland and basically when he was um, you know first delayed he was um, basically giving back the money that maybe he owed someone and maybe he was just settling some kind of uh, business that he had or he had some kind of threats from people he didn't want to bring his new family into this again there's no confirmation of this theory is just something that people has been speculating about and the second part of this theory is that maybe he's been involved with someone that has power in the police that would kind of explain why the police did such a bad job or show why the police didn't take so much interest into this case. I don't know who has that kind of power, but um, it must have been pretty bad and he didn't kind of seem like that guy to get into trouble. So yeah, these were just like uh, speculations. The third theory, which is my favorite, um, the one I'm most behind, and the theory goes like this. Um, Mateusz could have been on the side of the road, um, taking a break or maybe filling up. And there was a robbery that basically went bad. Um, someone could have wanted to steal his car and Mateusz was trying to put a fight because he really wanted to see his baby. At some point during the fight, he could have gotten um, injured or even killed. And the attacker just basically wanted to steal his car and uh, you know, he threw his body into the car. Uh, that would kind of explain why he maybe had his uh, feet removed and his head. Maybe that's the way the attacker wanted to get rid of the body. If this attacker knew that there's going to be organized search and he knew that the family is not going to be at their house, he could have just basically easily snuck in and dropped the body off there, maybe making some kind of ropes looking like it was a suicide. And then later on there was a car found that was kind of similar to his and the car was found burnt. So maybe that was his car. And yeah, so these were all the theories. Uh, I think the last one is probably the most probable one. Um, you guys let me know what your theories are on this case. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again, if you like this video, make uh, sure to give it a like, subscribe, and if you want to stay updated with the videos, hit the, the, the notification bell. Um, and yeah, this was a little bit of a long video, but I hope you guys um, enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.